Hello Helpful Programmer here and in this tutorial we're going to carry on with Collision and learn a bit about changing the size of the sprite when it's loaded up in game. First off let's go and carry on with Collision. Opening up our project let's go and put back in the movement left and right into our while loop so deleting the rotation and deleting the offset so all the collision and everything is back to normal with the movement. If you've forgotten how to do this then go back to the tutorial to see how it's done again. So once it's all done let's go and create another wall. We know the wall's load image is 2 so let's create another db sprite so db sprite open parentheses and then the next idea along say 3 comma and then let's put it to the left of our player so an x coordinate of 0 comma and then at the same level so 50 comma and then using the wall so 2 closing parentheses and doing the semicolon so now when we run it then when we run it you'll see that another wall has appeared to the, to the left of our character now when we move right just like last time we're able to collide to the right wall and not go through it and then when we go to the left you'll see that we don't actually collide with it, we just go straight through it. This is because we haven't done a function for the collision with this wall. Just like in the memory leaks, we want to try and shorten the code down to as little as possible. So instead of doing if db sprite collision with one and the wall that we're trying to collide with, there are two ways around this. One is to make a for loop and one is to use the code db sprite collision one and zero. If we put 0, instead of returning um, true or false, it will return the sprites that we collide with, if there is any. So here, instead of equals to 1, to make sure if it's bigger, then 0. So if we are colliding with something, and then again with this. So instead of checking the collision with sprite 2, we're checking the collision with all sprites in the game. and then again bigger and zero. Now when we run it you'll see that when colliding with both walls it will stop. So when I move to the left you'll see that it collides and then when I go to the right you'll also see that it collides. We only had to do one function. The only thing about this method is that if we have a background or something that we don't mind colliding with, it will take that into account too. So you've got to be careful in the way you number your sprites. So you could do if you had the background as 1 and the player as 2 and a wall as 3, you'd want to do bigger than 1, so not including 1. Or you go and db sprite collision between 1 and 0 so exclamation and a equal signs 1 or the sprite that you don't want to check collision with another way you can check for collision is doing a for statement just like our deleting sprites here so let's copy this for statement into our if statement so for and put brackets around this if statement what this will do, we'll check all the sprites from 1 to 10 but we don't want to check if the player is colliding with the player because that will just return true so let's set i to 2 now instead of 0 you do i and instead of this you do equals because you're checking if it's true or not and then same with this so you put the for statement in change it to 2 put brackets around the if statement and change this to two equal signs in a one and change this to i so it will run through the only problem with this is that it will check all sprites even if they're not there so so it will run through up to ten times which might slow the program down once you, when you get on to having hundreds of sprites now that I've shown you this let's go move on to changing the size of the sprite in game
sometimes you want to change the size of the sprites in game. To do this we use the function db size sprite. Open parentheses. In the first segment we put the ID, so we want to change the player, so one, do a comma, and then in the next two segments you put the X and Y size you want. So we know that our player is 100 pixels wide by 100 pixels in depth, so let's change it to 200. So 200 across, and then the Y coordinate, let's change it to 50 so it would actually be quite thin and narrow. Close parentheses and do a semicolon. Now when we run it, you see that our sprite has changed. We can still move left and right and still collide, but our character looks a bit weird. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you have learnt a lot. Bye.